What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how you could take about $2 in materials with this little AT Tiny 85 and create a Wi-Fi password stealer that will steal a password in about 20 to 30 seconds and it's all fairly straightforward. It takes about five minutes to get set up and the materials very cheap. You can compare this to a rubber ducky, it does exactly the same thing at about $50 and we can make our own for two to three bucks. And I printed this cute little case, which I'll talk about too. So before we get started, please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below. If you love me, hate me, whatever, I like to hear from you guys regardless. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So backstory really quick. About a week or two ago, I had never even heard of an AT Tiny 85. I just got into 3D printing. I got an Ender 3 V2 and I've just been going ham, printing everything that I possibly can that interests me. Well, I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. If you've never seen my tattoos, I mean, they're all Alice in Wonderland. I saw this lamp back there, which I'll put a nice little video on the screen, but I saw this lamp on a 3D printing site and I'm like, I've got to make that. So the printing part actually wasn't that bad. I got the printing done, but it uses a microcontroller called an AT Tiny 85 to run some code through those LED strips and create the pretty colors that you're seeing there. Um, very straightforward. It uses Arduino uh, IDE. It's very, very easy, but it took a little bit for me to figure out. And from there, I got to thinking, I said, well, this is a little, look at this. I mean, this is another one I've got here. This is a little USB, basically. I was like, why can't we just create these? These are two bucks a piece. Why can't we just create this and make this into a rubber ducky? So I did not invent this. This is nothing that I'm saying I'm inventive. Um, I'm just late to the game and I looked it up. There's a million different articles out there on how to create your own uh, rubber duckies using something like this. So I'm going to show you the code. I'm going to show you and walk you through the setup and we'll kind of just take it step by step. None of this is mine or original or anything like that. I did modify the code a tiny bit and we'll talk through that too. Uh, but you're going to see this work here at the end of the video and you'll see how fast it steals a Wi-Fi password. It's absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer and we'll talk through this process. So I'm going to put the link down below in what you need to purchase from Amazon. If you want to purchase uh, one of these, you can get about five of them for 11 bucks. Um, once you have these, or if you have one on hand by chance, uh, you can go ahead and get downloading the Arduino IDE. That's what we're going to use to actually code onto this little microcontroller. So you can come here, go to downloads. I'm going to put all of this in the description below, by the way, you come down here, just click, Hey, Arduino IDE, I want to download it for my operating system. You download it, you install it, you run it. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, just next, next, next. Give away your kids, whatever the terms of agreements are. And then you'll be brought to something that looks a little bit like this. Once it loads, you'll get your first demo script. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do when you're in here is we got to do a little bit more installation. So you're going to come in here and you're just going to say file and you're gonna to go to preferences, all right? And this little line of URL, it's kind of hard, probably hard to see, but this little line I'm gonna put in there in the description below as well. You just need to paste this in. Okay, it's digistump.com forward slash package underscore digistump underscore index dot JSON. Okay, this is an additional board manager. What that's gonna allow us to do is go up here to tools, go to board, and then we can go to board manager here. We can install a board manager. Now we need to install the DigiSpark board manager because that's what we're going to be messing around with here, a DigiSpark ATtiny85. All right, so we just type in DigiSpark and you should see the DigiStump here. Actually, if you just type in DigiStump, that'll work too, but DigiStump, uh, you'll see the DigiStump AVR boards. So we're looking for this. You can go ahead and just hit install. If you hover over it, I already have it installed, but it's straightforward again, just hit install. Let that install, pause the video if you need to, and just go through that process. All right, once that's installed, now we can move on to the next little bit. The next bit that we have to do is we have to run one more installation, and that I'm gonna give you another link for too. That is just the Digistump Arduino drivers. Okay, if you Google Digistump Arduino drivers, you'll find this, but of course I'm gonna link this in the description below. 
You come here, if you're on Windows, you can just click right here, Digistump Drivers. You'll unzip it. They've also got the tar.gz and the zip. Okay, this will bring up a folder. All you have to do is just, I'm gonna bring this over, make it super straightforward. Okay, all you have to do here is just run the install drivers, click through it. Again, easy peasy, all right? So go through all that. Again, if you need to pause, just let it go. I'll be here when uh, waiting for you when you come back. So once this is all out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start looking at the coding of the project. Now, I'm gonna show you the code that I actually used. I used this MTK911 ATtiny85 little repository here, and I'll link this again in the description below. They've got a bunch of payloads. These are rubber ducky payloads. If you go on Google and you just search for rubber ducky AT tiny 85 payloads, you'll find a ton. Okay, I just saw one that I thought would be interesting, which is a Wi-Fi password stealer. Typically, you don't have to be an administrator to steal the Wi-Fi. Um, you could just plug this in, run this as a regular non-administrator command prompt, and you're good to go. So that's why I chose this. You could plug this in if you're walking around on site. You just want to steal somebody's Wi-Fi password in about 20 seconds. Whatever it is, if somebody's not looking on their computer and you can pop this in, it's actually very, very straightforward. Um, so if we go look at the code, there's the minimize the shame is the one I'm using. Um, we'll look at this inside of the actual IDE, but basically all it's doing is sending a bunch of commands to the keyboard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, you can download this, all right, this INO file. All you gotta do is download it or you can copy it to a file, name it uh, the same thing or however you wanna name it, open it up and you'll be looking something like this, okay? This is exactly what it looks like in the Arduino IDE. Now, we're using a digikeyboard.h include. We have to come up to tools and we just have to select our board. So since we installed the board manager, now we can use the Digistump AVR. I just say Digistump right here on the top and then I chose port one or com one for my port. Okay, that's all you gotta do. It's fairly straightforward. The rest of this is copy and paste. So. In here, what's happening, if we look through this, all this is doing is sending a bunch of code, okay, or a bunch of keystrokes is all we're doing. And that's really what a rubber ducky does. A rubber ducky just sends out keystrokes. So it's opening up, it's running the Windows key with the R here, and it's gonna open up a run command. It's going to open up a command prompt as tiny as it can, and then it's gonna try to move it down. So this little send keystroke down, this little for loop here, it's just going to keyboard down and try to hide the command prompt. Um, you don't have to do this one. This one's just a little hidden one. I just chose it for fun. Um, if somebody was watching their computer screen, this is going to be glaringly obvious that something's going on. This is one of those that you plug it in and then you, you hope nobody's around or watching and then you take it out and you're done, okay? Um, but with that being said, all it does is it changes to a temp directory. It runs this net sh command and it exports your profile. And it says key equals clear. If you don't know this, all of your Wi-Fi passwords are saved in clear text on Windows. Okay. So uh, if you don't know, now you know. Uh, what this does now is it runs PowerShell and it looks for the original code has a dash here. And it looked for Wi-Fi dash but that's not the pattern that it actually creates. It creates a Wi-Fi space, at least on mine. So I removed the dash and just had the wildcard here. And then it's looking for what's called key material. If you look in the export, when they actually export the material, you'll see that it is an XML file. Uh, that XML file has something called key material. The key material contains the password, okay? So that's all it's looking for. It's just, just trying to pull down a string. This is similar to grepping in Linux. It's just looking for a specific word and specific line and pulling that down instead of extracting all of the, uh, the XML file because we don't need it all, okay? And then we're going to invoke a web request. We're going to send this via a post method and we're going to ship it off into a webhook site, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then it'll delete the file, try to clear it up. Again, this had a dash here. I found the dash did not work, so I just took that out and then it exited, okay? Also, I've edited this a little bit to change the delays. So if you're curious and you're looking at this, I tweaked this just a bit to make sure that the delay in between the commands was just long enough to work. I noticed a little bit of it running over itself in the command prompt, so I just made this a little bit slower. Uh, in theory, you could tweak this, make this faster, and this would even execute quicker. 
Uh, but I like this because I've had a 100% success rate when I've tweaked the delay just a little bit. All right, and then it says it'll turn on the LED once the program finishes. I do have the little, uh, the little cover that I 3D printed, which I'll link that in the description below. I'll link the little 3D print that I did if you're curious on, on putting one on this. Otherwise, you can buy uh, a case for these fairly cheap as well. So with that being said, once this is all said and done, you got all the drivers installed and you want to run this, um, we're going to go ahead and just check the little verify box up here. And before we actually do that, I do want to talk about this webhook site, webhook.site. Now, if you go to webhook.site, it should look something like this, all right? So this is webhook.site. You'll get a unique URL. Here's your unique URL. I recommend you do this for your own. Don't use mine, because what, what if I'm watching you? I mean, you can come visit if you want, but there's, I mean, there's nothing here. Uh, so you can just copy this to your clipboard. You can also have an email address. And all we're doing is waiting for a request to come in. Okay, so we're sitting here with just a hook. We're waiting for a listener. We have a listener just waiting for that post request to come to us. Once it does, it'll pop up right here, and we'll see that full action here in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and go back to the code and we've already verified. Now all we need to do is just hit upload. Okay, we don't need anything plugged in yet. So now you can see, hey, we're plugging the device, we're waiting on it. I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that in in a new ATtiny85, which I'm gonna plug in now. Okay, and you see that it just says micronucleus done, thank you, all right? So the next thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna go ahead and test this out. So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in, but first, I think I wanna set something up. Okay, I want to actually use a stopwatch and I'm gonna plug this in now. And now I'm gonna hit start. I wanna see how long it takes for something to show up here. You can see it running a little bit on the screen there. It's invoking and exited and there we are. So about 20 seconds is what that just took. Okay, and you can see my Wi-Fi is please don't hack me with a couple exclamations and my password is terrible. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's it. I mean, that it was that simple. Plug in, go. I was probably a little delayed here. 20 seconds, right? That's not bad. 20 seconds to steal somebody's Wi-Fi password with a $2 piece of material. I mean, I am 14 minutes into my video right now with editing that has to go down. So what I just showed you literally does take maybe five, 10 minutes to set up and you can have this have this hooking in, in literally 10 minutes. Like it's, it's insane the power of this microcontroller and it's insane what you can do and don't have to spend $50 on a rubber ducky. Not saying the Hack5 is not great, but a lot of us are on a budget, right? So if you're on a budget, that's a, a great alternative. So everything's gonna be in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I really enjoyed making this. I enjoyed doing this project and I hope to do more hardware and more coding projects as we go as well. So I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, my name is the Cyber Mentor and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.